All right, so hi, my name is uh, Travis Lindsay, professor, uh, co-founder of an investment fund, uh, some other stuff too, but uh, today I'm here with one of my uh, previous students, recent graduate, graduate graduated in uh, May. Yeah. Yeah, you graduated in May. Uh, you, you didn't go to the graduation. Why, why, why was that, Anthony? You know, I just wasn't really feeling it. It wasn't for me. Kind of crowded, you know. Yeah, I get it. It's, it's crowded. You don't want to get sick. You don't want to get people sick. So just, you know, stay home and uh, just focus on work. And that's why we're here today, yeah. right? It's, it's, it's about work. So uh, give everybody a little bit of a background on uh, what you're doing now, your main job, your uh, side hustle, and uh, we can take it from there. Yeah, sounds great. So like Travis said, I'm Anthony Abdel Said, and I am a re recent graduate, graduated um, with a uh, concentration in entrepreneurship. And ever since graduation, well, and throughout my time in school, I have obviously, like you mentioned, a main job, which is kind of my main endeavor right now. Um, my cousin, uh, he has a mattress and furniture store in West Los Angeles. My family's been in the mattress industry for I mean, forever, basically, my dad had a manufacturing factory in Montebello uh, that was there for like 25 years. And then my cousin moved up from Florida, worked as a sales rep designer, and he's had his store for eight years now. I've been working there for the past uh, two years, three years on and off. And I've just now, as a graduate, taken more of a serious role there in sales. Um, but obviously, we sell mattresses and furniture. And given that the two of us are pretty fairly young, uh, we've taken a big effort in exploring and developing our online presence as just a one store retailer, right? So we've had a very successful store. As you can imagine, the mattress industry is a very competitive place to be in. Um, but over the past year, we've been doing a lot of experimenting uh, with the online space in terms of developing that e-commerce platform. So. A lot of testing between specific landing sites for luxury products in particular, luxury mattresses. And uh, over the past year, we've had a lot of success, especially with COVID right now, having put us out of business for two months, we were closed down. The fact that we had such robust landing pages that were highly targeted for high ticket, uh, high margin items really kept us afloat and has only continued to grow. And so. A lot of testing and time and energy put into that has, uh, is what we're continuing to develop. Our long-term goal is to have um, a fully encased website with all our product offering. And that's kind of the main thing, but. Yeah, and, and so I, I wanted to hit, hit on that a little bit. Sorry for cutting you off there, but I mean, that's, that's a crap ton of work, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, I mean, it's how many hours a week are you spending just on building out these pages and, uh, you know, just like walk people through that process because I think from the, somebody who's just going on a website, looking at it, it's like, Oh, well this, you know, put up a couple pictures, put in some text and you're good to go. Uh, so, uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So, I mean, what you just described is sort of the tail end of everything. Right. Um, but all, I mean, all in all, you know, hours and hours have gone into this. I mean, we've, we've got, we talk about the website that we're trying to develop. And then uh, over the past two years, we developed a, our own line of mattresses. So the combination of those two things, I mean, I want to say on average, it, I probably spend, I don't know, 20 to, yeah, like around 20, 25 hours every week just gathering materials in order to be able to push those to our web developer so he can actually work on the website. So that's where the bulk of work comes in. You're talking about web assets like product photos, um, lifestyle photos. You need to do your accurate pricing. So that takes a lot of competitor analysis, um, understanding how things are marketed by others and how we can improve upon that. So a lot of discussion and talks about strategy there as well as the nature of the mattress industry. It's very kind of confusing uh, for the consumer, right? So you can have the same mattress in any different store, but they'll just call it a different thing and put a new cover over it. So how do we make the shopping experience easier, more streamlined um, and more profitable, right? So gathering information, the data part of it, you know, keywords, all the SEO, scouring the competitor sites, um, gathering all our product photos from our suppliers and our manufacturers or taking our own photos, all that takes so much time. And that's all for the purpose of trying to build the website. Once you have all that data, 
you can then push it to a developer who, again, you have to explain exactly what it is you want to do, and he'll take the time, however long that may be, depending on his skill, to actually go ahead and create what you're envisioning based on all the materials that you've gathered, right? So that takes a lot of time, energy, and, um, you know, the, the, the efficiency part of it is really important. We've spent a lot of time um, being meticulous about all the details because this is a system that we're developing that will be prolonged and exist far into the future. So if we can optimize it as best we can, in the long run, it's going to save us even more time than we've been putting in um, you know, when we start developing a lot more traction. Yeah, and I, I assume, I mean, that's, this is still just, uh, this is part of the equation, right? So, I mean, you're still going to have to go out, uh, purchase uh, online ads, I'm assuming. Uh, and then what, what, what else are you doing to market this? Uh, because what, what, what you described, I mean, that's, that's fantastic for SEO. That's fantastic for landing page, getting people to convert uh, through the sales funnel. Uh, but you have to get, you have to get the, the people into the funnel to start off with. Yeah. So, you know, one, our strategy so far has been um, actually attacking the funnel at the lower end, right? So what I mean by that is we're advertising to people who are ready to buy and know what they want to buy, which takes a lot of, um, of the workload off of us. Uh, and I'll give you an example. So there's a particular line of mattresses that's lux that's a luxury line. Um, and people go out and look for that. They don't, they don't kind of start their search online. They, well, they, they will, but then eventually they will find this product and they'll go out looking for that, which of, there are many retailers for, right? So what we do is we make our, our, our um, landing pages specifically for those products with you know, all the details we toss in this, different incentives and price competitively. And with that, we, the goal is to bring them into the store, right? That's where we close them. So, you know, we have that whole online aspect, but then really the money making is in the store. So having a combination of a uh, highly targeted landing page to bring in those people for the objective of having them come in and buy from you at the store. So they're already kind of pre-sold because they know what they want. Um, but you know, you can't really make a sale without a salesman you know, or a salesperson, right? Right. No, absolutely. So that's more of like a kind of, it sounds a little bit like a long tail strategy, right? So it's, uh, you've, you're, you're only targeting the people. They've already done their research. They've mm -hmm. gone on, they, they probably looked at manufacturers, websites, whatever. I mean, especially for a specialty mattress, this is somebody who's looking for something in particular. And yeah. at the point where they get to your, to your site, they're just looking to buy. And so they're going to go to your site. They might find somebody else who's selling the same thing, but uh, chances are if they find yours, uh, definitely on that first page, uh, they're going to be a hell of a lot more likely to buy from you than they would from somebody who's on the third or fourth or fifth page of, of a search. Exactly. And I would just add that, you know, it's particular to this industry, uh, mattress shopping in general is, is very confusing and that's done on purpose. So the manufacturers will supply many different retailers the same product in some sense, right? Same component materials. But what they do is they change the name of the mattress and they change the fabric cover. So they make it very hard and difficult for the consumer to actually shop around. And what we try to do with our um, targeting online, but also in store is we educate people about that truth and we help them shop around. And then we just offer more value. I mean, um, we have bundles that include luxury mattresses, but obviously if you're in a luxury mattress, uh, if you're looking for one, um, you probably have the money for luxury sheets, luxury pillows, or an adjustable bed frame. So we tie in a lot of bundles that build value into us while still remaining much more competitive at a price point because if we're a small firm, we can do that. Um, we don't have high overheads like mattress firm or ortho like that, right? So building value is um, super important to what we do. Uh, it also really helps the fact that our customers know what they are, know what kind of know what they're looking for already. Right. And then part of that, uh, part of this whole strategy, and I don't know how far along you are in this, but it's uh, getting people to also buy the accessories. So the pillows, the, the uh, uh, mattress cover, the uh, quilts, everything, right? Yeah. In, in some sense, I mean, usually 
we'll, we use those as um, kind of goodies, you know, like you'll, you'll, you'll say a price and you'll see how they react. And well, you, you approach them, well, I can, are you in need of some new pillows? You know, you just kind of sweeten the deals with those things. I mean, the margins on them are really nice because they are luxury materials, but we can still get them for much less than what they cost at, at, you know, at retail. So we toss those in and they tend to help convert a lot. It's just a great thing. Again, like a lot of people underestimate the power of, I mean, they know giving free stuff works, but when you share complimentary products to a main purchase, it really can go the extra mile. I mean, some people would prefer luxury sheets, luxury pillows, a mattress protector, um, all that, you know, costs us around a hundred or 200 bucks rather than getting another $500 discount on the mattress or the whole purchase. So it's a whole kind of psychology thing you have to work with and you learn, you know, but. Yeah, there, there, there's definitely behavioral economics at play there. I mean, there's, yeah. uh, I, I don't know if you've read uh, any of the books like Nudge or uh, like, oh God, what are their names? Uh, Tversky and Kahneman. Uh, there are a couple of behavioral economists, but there, there, there's a lot to that. So if you have something that's tangible that you're getting as a gift, you value it more highly than you would just, you know, 500 bucks, even though the yeah. actual value of that stuff, if you were to go out and buy it is only, like you said, a couple hundred bucks, maybe even a hundred bucks. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's just, it, it's amazing how that stuff works. Uh, but what, the, what, what was really interesting to me, and we're going to, you know, do a little bit of a segue here, I guess, uh, but you, ha you also have a side hustle now. Uh, so to, uh, to tell, tell everybody about this. And uh, if anybody's wondering, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put the link to your website uh, in the description of this video. And so people can find that there for the, uh, for the mattress company and then also for this one as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll definitely. So, Probably just stick to the side hustle thing that I'm going on right now, this little, I guess, startup, you can call it. Um, so the website hasn't been developed yet. I was actually just working on it before our call, and but I will let you know as soon as um, it is. But uh, yeah, so our product, well, I guess I should give you kind of the whole story. The product is basically just um, it's this. I don't know how well you can see this. I'll put it up against the white, but it's a multi-purpose tool that allows you to pull things like that or push things with a stylus or buttons and things like that. It comes with a keychain, four different colors that I can show you. You can explore the website um, for. And essentially kind of the birth of this idea, um, I think it took place around, I wanna say July, uh, late July, I had I uh, saw one of those, one of my buddies, he had one and he got, it was kind of crummy um, that he was complaining about. So I was like, oh, that's pretty interesting. Obviously this is when you know, COVID first picked up or a few months after, but yeah. um, I'd been looking into it and seeing what they were going for. And I could only imagine that the, the cost of these things was like, you know, cents, you know, maybe, maybe a dollar or something like that. So, you know, I talked about it with a friend and he, seemed interested in approaching it. So we decided to just grab a few hundred of these things and see what we could do just as an experiment, you know? Yeah. Um, we saw what they were going for online and figured the costs to be pretty low. So the margins were gonna be um, pretty respectable. And it seemed like a fairly straightforward, simple product uh, to work with. And yeah, so we got those things. We've had kind of a late start given some um, personal things that were going on with my friend and myself. So we've had, we've been sitting, unfortunately, on this product for, I want to say four weeks now. And we just started this week to actually pick up and move forward given all that other stuff we were dealing with. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I just, I just started and I'm working on the website. We've got shipping materials and all that we've developed um, our logo and brand. So I don't know if you can see this, maybe I can share my screen with you. Is yeah, it, push, push, pull the pre, uh, premier super safety claw. Exactly. Right. So, I mean, and you, you can tell that, let me just pull this out. The, um, so, yeah. So are, are, are you going to sell it as more of like a, like a, a, a qual, like a super quality item or uh, wh wh where are you going uh, as far as like the price point? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I've always been kind of in the, in the camp of, you know, it's great to sell, you know, luxury high-end products, but what's even better is mm -hmm. to sell seemingly luxury high-end products at 
below mark, you know, below retail prices, because you do two things with that. Everybody wants to have a nice, cool thing, um, but also everybody wants to pay the least amount that they can, right? So, um, looking at our competitors, we've seen um, them in the in the range of twenty dollars for a similar tool that, in our opinion, is not as effective. I've seen them in CVS go for twenty, twenty-five dollars each. Um, that don't have a stylus for some instance, right? So we've looked to find the, or provide the most value. That's our real strategy right there is find the best possible product, present it in the most fashionable way and give a price that's not greedy. You know, I mean, 20, but I mean, I'll tell you at cost, these things are around a dollar and 60 cents, maybe two or three dollars given sh total cost shipping, uh, you know, everything. Um, um, but you know, when you're selling them at 13 bucks, even if it costs you, you know, three bucks, you know, that's still $10 margin. That's really nice. You know, so it's high quality that we've looked into. We got samples for, and we're going to price it very reasonably, but even better than that, we're going to market it as, um, functional and cool and stylish. Right. So. Okay. So you're hitting like that, that kind of mid market somewhere in between uh, the, the cheap version of it and what would maybe be, be perceived as like the luxury version of it. Uh, sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, personally, if, if I was doing it, I, I would probably be because yours is a better quality. Uh, and I'm sure you, you've tested out the other ones and, and you found out that they, they suck or, or whatever the case may be. Mm. Uh, but I mean, this is something you buy one of, or maybe you buy multiples of uh, for uh, friends and family. Um, I, I would personally go 30 to $40 range, kind of a, a little above market because uh, just like you were saying with the mattresses, when somebody's going to actually make a purchase, uh, this is something that they need, right? Because they, they, they don't want to touch stuff and they want to make sure that uh, they're getting something that works and doesn't break down over time. Yeah. But that's but that, 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 that's just me, man. So uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, yeah, we're 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 gonna see how how this goes. Yeah, I mean, you're exactly right, though. I mean, I've thought about the same thing, right? So, what 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 you know, the name of the game in any entrepreneurial endeavor is testing, right? I mean, you need to fail as fast as you can to move on and find out what actually works, right? Whether that's your advertising strategies, your copy, your um, or the, you know your actual product in your pricing, right? So we've what i just got done working on before i hopped on this call was creating um plugins that use bundles right so uh we want we developed a strategy one for 15 two for 25 four for 45 right so mm -hmm. we do like a 15 percent off for the two pack uh 25 percent off for the four pack and those bumps are there and you can also select it different colors in those packs so we create a lot of like incentive to um, buy in bulk with that savings but also the flexibility to choose your colors right so uh, again with the with the margins they way the way they are it's it's cheap enough to buy on an impulse and again this product isn't something necessarily that you're gonna look for i mean you'd probably see this on your feed and think, you know, on, on Instagram um, or Facebook and think, Oh, that's an interesting kind of tool. Maybe I should get that. And you'd probably buy it there right on the spot. Um, and, and I, I would feel like that's the majority of what, of the way of people who buy this kind of thing. That's why, you know, at CVS, it was placed right up at the front by the checkout because they know it's an impulse buy. Sure. Um, the SEO for competitors isn't that great because their emphasis isn't on SEO which means they're spending more on advertising for those, you know, one, one stop, you know, they want to see it, they want to buy it right there. So um, that's kind of the strategy with this and the best way to increase your margins on them is obviously volume. I mean, they've got great margins, but if we can push, you know, hundreds of these every month, that's, that's fine. You know, that's awesome. I mean, that's that, you're about, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, but like, like, like speaking of that, um, I think another segment for you might also be businesses. Uh, so eventually, yeah. Bus yeah, businesses are going to get back uh, to doing business. Uh, maybe it's in California, that'll be sometime in 2022. Uh, but uh, other places, it's it's earlier than that. Um, I mean, hell, there, there, there's a lot of schools that are in session right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Cal State Fullerton and most of California were not. Uh, but uh, 
I could see a huge market for businesses, especially like branded items. Is that yeah. something that you've looked into at all? Yeah. So actually, um, I've had my 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 business partners uh, two. He has two friends on the East Coast, in one in New Jersey and in uh, Illinois. And I mean, it, they were just kind of spitballing the idea of uh, of of us acting like a wholesaler, right? So we get our product from overseas. And then we'll just mark it up or they can take a commission as like a sales rep or something like that to local businesses. Um, so that's a whole other clientele and whole different strategy um, that comes with, you know, different pricing and everything. So I think the best way to get there is to first develop the brand um, website, develop the social media, develop some reviews to show the efficacy of the product. And then um, when we, uh, are prepared maybe with the next bigger shipment, you know, we can um, send our branded item or offer custom branded services at a markup. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's actually a really great idea. A lot of businesses, you know, like you said, go, you know, hand something like this out for free or just have it at the self checkout or whatever, you know? So that's, yeah, that's a whole other thing that we haven't put too much energy into right now. Um, but we definitely want to explore for sure. All right. So I, I, I'm thinking that, you know, people who are watching this, they, they now know that you were one of my students uh, and that you were a business student at Cal State Fullerton. So they're wondering if I'm probably going to ask anything about, hey, are you actually applying anything that you learned in school to either this venture or, or the, the mattress company that you're working on with your family? Uh, so I'll just pose it to you. Uh, are you using anything that you got from your education? on either of these ventures uh -huh, yeah so i mean obviously if my reply isn't an immediate yes or no it's it's a little bit of both right so um i would say you know look all the technical things that you learn uh definitely study form get the grade form but don't i mean it's not that big of a deal if you don't retain it right um i've the most of the learning comes from the actual doing right and that's why i love the entrepreneurship courses in particular because you actually did things rather than read about doing things right or read about doing things so for instance you know obviously in your class developing the um, your own ideas and working on them with a team that's what i had been doing with my cousin you know that's what i do with him now we have an idea we develop to execute on those things right so those kinds of skills those uh those opportunities, those are what I benefited from most. Same thing with a tool, a tools class is uh, 465B and is 464, right? Um, those things we actually went out and did and accomplished the consulting courses for um, uh, like marketing 462 with Sorrel. You know, those are the places where you really want to pay attention, where you actually engage with clients, where you engage with a team. And that's the most valuable part. I mean, I don't remember anything from ISDS or uh, what's the management strategy, anything like that. Like, I, you, you I don't really remember, don't. You don't and remember all the cases okay. you did in the, in the capstone management 449 class? <laughs> yeah, the, the class that was supposed to be the amalgamation of everything we've learned in the, in the uh, business, in all of our business courses. Yeah, I didn't remember really much of anything. I mean, I remember Pepsi was the case that I studied, but that was it, you know. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, and, and in those classes defense, uh, because look, I mean, I, I, I get it. The reason why people look forward to taking, you know, management 465A, where you build out a business plan, is that, oh, hell, we actually get to work on an idea of our own, something that maybe we've been thinking about for years or at least yeah. months, uh, and, you know, maybe start a business. Uh, for the other classes, I think that there's, at least in my case, there was a lot of, like, muscle memory uh, that occurred. So some mm -hmm. of the things... Uh, I just, uh, when I encountered them in, in the real world, I, I somehow, some way knew how to do it. And it wasn't just uh, ex nilo. It, it just, you know, something out of nothing, right? It, it wasn't that. I, I learned it along the way. It was probably a combination. I know you read a lot. Uh, so I, I do too. So maybe it's a combination of what I learned in the classroom and then also uh, just from reading and uh, researching and just observing. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I get it. I get it. I mean, like in, in my class and I'm teaching 465A again, uh, this semester, I was talking, uh, yesterday about boards of directors. Uh, do, do you have a board of directors? No, I mean, I no. don't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but you know, maybe sometime down the road, five, 
10 years from now, you might. Uh, will you remember anything from that lecture I, I did a year ago for you about boards of directors? Probably not. Uh, but uh, it's, it's um, uh, I, I, I think that there might be a little bit of muscle memory there. At least you'll know that it exists. Uh, so. Yeah, no, definitely. And you know, you are right about that. Maybe I downplayed that um, to, to an extent for sure. But I mean, for example, like, I mean, one thing that I, that I for, totally forgot about that I should mention is like, so I remember how I said I didn't, I don't really remember anything from ISDS. Well, I actually, for the store, for our, our actual retail, retail location, I used Excel um, to create a really nice um, pricing calculator because um, the, you know, in sales, it's all about profit, right? So it, you know, nobody really pays retail price for a mattress. You're, they're going to haggle, right? So the best way to be prepared and uh, to have a solid strategy is to know at each margin what your profit is going to be. So I actually did use that technical understanding of the, of this, of the tools and like the knowledge that I learned in that class to help create that calculator on Excel so that I could be performed better. And, you know, we could try to hold our margins at a higher level. So, you know, yes, they definitely pay attention to those classes and, and soak in what you can. I mean, I don't, I don't think there's any reason you shouldn't learn something um, if you don't, you know, just cause it's hard or it's tedious. I mean, there's always going to be value there for sure. And you never know when it might be applied. So I just feel personally that I gained the most in terms of experience. I'm, you know, more of that ex experiential learner, um, from 100, per, yeah, 100% in agreement with you on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 100%. I mean, that, that, that's what I'm telling my students now. And I, I, I don't know if I did, you know, a year ago, but, uh, the way that you're going to actually set yourself up for the future to get a job to start a business is to just actually start doing shit. Yeah. Uh, and so if you, uh, may, maybe you do have a family member that has a business or maybe you don't, but you probably know somebody that does. I mean, hell you're a business student. Uh, go talk with your professor, say, Hey, this is what I want to do. I'm looking for a project or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and then just start doing that stuff because that's, what's going to actually get you ahead. And that's, and that's, what's going to help you learn. I mean, hell, I bet you're learning more, uh, now about business because you're having to do it and you actually get paid for it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so there, there is a little bit of a profit motive there, obviously, and there should be, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, it's actually doing stuff. Uh, the whole sitting down, listening to a lecture, uh, taking a multiple choice exam, uh, that doesn't happen in the real world for the most part. I mean, unless you go into some gigantic bureaucracy and you have to take a, a, a test to advance uh, through that. Uh, so, yeah, I totally get it. Uh, I think you're spot on. Uh, so, for yeah, and I think, you know, even, even if you are the kind of student who is looking to get into, you know, Fortune 500 company or you're working really hard towards something like that, yeah, I mean, you're probably more oriented towards like the technical things. I'm sure you, you know, you're really adamant about your grades. Um, but the, you know, the, the cool thing is that, you know, everybody's going to give you your own definition of like what an entrepreneur is or what it means to be an entrepreneur. But, you know, I, you can just toss all that kind of stuff out the window. What it, what it really, you know, matters or what it really means, I think at the bottom of it is just, if you can be a really good problem solver and critical thinker, if you, have a problem and you don't know how to solve it you have the ability to go out and solve it and you know even at, at the sales floor like where i at my cousin's store i mean i'm confronted with hundreds dozens of problems each and every single day and you know there's people with you know thousands of dollars on the line that need solutions right so you know even in a big company like a big fortune 500 company if you if that's the route that you want to take like um, they look for what are called entrepreneurs. Like they want people in their big companies that have entrepreneurial tendencies who can solve problems in an effective and efficient manner, you know? So just overall gaining experience as a problem solver rather than an entrepreneur is, is I think where a lot of the learning, where a lot of the stability and foundation of how my, how I go about practicing my businesses and stuff like that. That's really where I get the most value. The most application is just, become a better problem solver all around. I mean, when you're dealing with people or a business model um, or a team really, you know, so it's, that's where it stands out for me. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, and this is a very, this is an oversimplification of it. Uh, but in general, and of course, there, again, there, there's nuance to this, but in general, the entrepreneurs that are successful are the ones that can just 
day after day after day move the ball forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, yes, there's going to be obstacles. I'm sure you've encountered you've encountered a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, shit happens, and either you move forward or you you stop making progress and your business dies. Uh, and I mean that. And that there. I mean, look, there there might be a time when there's just an insurmountable object that that. Uh, comes up on the horizon for you and you can't get around it. I mean, that does happen to even the best mm -hmm. of entrepreneurs. But uh, for the most part, just moving the ball forward is, is what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Seriously. Yeah, I mean, just kind of finishing up or touching on that is that uh, the way I've always kind of looked at just things in life in general is when you take a step, there's like no going back, right? You, you, there's really no way if you have that kind of motivation or attitude um, to go backwards anyways. Yeah, sure. You get halted, but I don't think, you know, a lot of effort is ever, um, you know, in vain, you know? So, you know, we've been, for example, developing, I mean, even on this, spe this specific, the push and pull, like we've had this, we've had product for a little while and, um, it was just something personal came up in my business partner's life that, you know, we couldn't continue moving forward with, but, on the sidelines, you know, I planned and we thought about things. And then when he was ready enough, you know, now we're actually executing. And every day that you do something, you get a little bit closer, right? So right up, right on about that. All right. Uh, so I, uh, if it's all right with you, I mean, I, I enjoyed this interview. I was, I was like talking with you, Anthony. Uh, so I, I was thinking, you know, catch up with you maybe once a month, at once every couple of weeks, just to find out uh, what you're doing with Push and Pull. And then also with the mattress company and just to, just to see if, uh, that whole education thing wasn't in vain. <laughs> Not really. I mean, it's it, 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 it's more just to see uh, uh, see somebody who's at the first steps of being successful and uh, uh, the path forward. Because I think that uh, for most people in general, they have like no freaking clue how the how this sort of thing actually happens. And so there, there's a lot of minutia at play there. There's you know just a lot of the day to day bullshit that you have to deal with and uh, getting a. Uh, a frontline perspective, I think, is valuable. Yeah, no, and I, 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 w I do look forward to kind of exploring and explaining what's going on um, because I think you are right. You know, when when all you have, you know, a lot of students, you know, you have a job, you have two jobs. Some of you, some of you even have like three jobs. And yeah. kudos to you because you know, working and supporting yourself or your family and taking you know three, four, five classes at a time, you you have no time. Um, other than what you have to do, right? And when it comes to, you know, exploring your own future career opportunities or small endeavors that maybe you have ideas about, but just don't have the time for, I mean, I hate to I hate to say it this way, but really, you, know, you can carve the time out when you can. I mean, you don't have to commit hours and hours and hours um, that you don't have to a project that you're not sure is going to work. But honestly, the best way to get the 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 experience that you want um, to prepare yourself better is to just try things like just just go out and you know I spent you know a few hundred dollars on this item I don't know if it's going to work but I'm going to try to do it and I'm going to try that in my spare time right so if it works awesome but you know I, I do understand the fact that a lot of students don't have they just don't have the time to be able to think about what it is they want to do or what they should do or how they should find out what they like to do is there's a whole bunch of questions at play there. Um, and especially now what's with going on, I, I sympathize a lot. Um, but again, if you just, if you just sit down one day and you think to yourself, okay, I, I need to get a little, a little bit of something going. I need to explore. I need to try things. That attitude right there is going to make a whole world's difference. Um, and the experience that you get from that decision, when you commit that to yourself, uh, it's really going to propel, propel you far uh, and pass beyond um, your peers, you know, which is, you know, you know the goal, right? I mean, you want to be better than everybody um, and help out as much as you can, of course. But I mean, we're in a highly competitive world economy. I mean, there's no room for people that are going to take the time, uh, that, that, that are going to be slow or not take the time to think about strategy and planning and, and what tomorrow holds for, you know, while living in today, right? So... Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. Well, one last thing, and I, I promise I'll, I'll let you get back to your day off. <laughs> you you don't right. have many of those. Uh, uh, so uh, this is like a ballpark. I, I know you spent a few hundred bucks on push pull. Uh, uh, 
how much time have you spent on it? So you, you said you, you saw this product at, like in July or something like that. And it was like, oh, these guys are shit. I could do a better job. Uh, I, I don't know if that was exactly what came, went through your mind, but it was probably something close to no, that. Did it, yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, so, I mean, like how much time, like how much time did it take you to find uh, the supplier to make the purchase, to get it in? I'm assuming you're storing it at, at home uh, mm -hmm. for now and you'll do fulfillment out of your house for now. Uh, but let me, how much time have you spent on it over the last uh, couple of months? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say a ridiculous amount, actually, because it's, again, the whole concept is very, is fairly simple, right? But what I, I mean, I wouldn't be able to give you a quantifiable number, but what I can say is with the majority of my time has been spent on, like, for example, finding a supplier um, took me an hour, you know, it maybe less, right? I mean, when you have a tool like Alibaba or AliExpress, like, you know, a lot of people think, oh, it's just crummy items there. Yeah, sure. There's a bunch of crummy items, but there's, so are, you know, there's a bunch of fake stuff on Amazon too. So it's just a matter of knowing how to develop and find a supply relation, for example, right? So I got samples that took like a week and a half to get here. Um, I liked them and I, you know, I needed a brand. So I spent some money. I probably spent like 20 bucks developing logos and different variations. Um, and that took maybe like three days. So a lot of these things that you, you can do all at once, like I should have been working on the website as I was waiting for all those things, but I had just got started with my work. So I wanted to put a little bit more emphasis on that as a salesperson. And, um, you know, uh, right now we're, we're working on the website, but we're also gathering materials for shipping as well as understanding, um, you know, developing our marketing strategies, our pricing strategies. So all these things, you know, I have three days off of the week, which I'm very fortunate for. And I, you know, I, I'm going to, I plan on spending the majority of those days um, working on this thing, you know, as much as I can. My, my business partner, he's going for his master's. So he's still in school. He still has class Monday through Wednesday um, when I have days off. So that kind of sucks. Right. But the beautiful yeah. thing is that when you learn to allocate or delegate, Uh, and work on what you can when you can I mean that's again that's like you were saying you get the ball moving forward like day by day so there's no race I mean there's no there's you know millions of people that we can potentially sell to so I don't think like there's any time constraint but obviously the faster the better because if we get it sold today that means I got profit in my you know tomorrow right so um, it, it doesn't it doesn't take too much time I mean if you're a student who has a very busy schedule for personal, you know, or reasons, whatever, um, honestly, I could probably get something like this done in a total of like 20 hours. I mean, maybe less, you know, so that's, you know, an, an hour, two hours a day. Every yeah, I mean, that's not even a day. day. Um, and startup costs, I'll just, I'll you know, yeah, exactly. You know, like if you really needed to grind it, you, you definitely could. I mean, um, granted, like I've had some experience with online, like e-commerce, obviously, and um, I got a lot of great stuff from um, learning about just the development, you know, from professors like yourself, uh, Sorel, um, and a tool. Like I have a lot of that knowledge there, which helped me make these decisions very quickly, which is awesome. Um, and then in terms of startup costs, like I, we spent a total of about $800 on just acquiring the product, right? So that was, you know, uh, some say, you know, we split that halfway. So, which was awesome, which means we split the profits obviously, but um, we, you know, that was a, you know, something that I had saved that I felt comfortable with, you know, 400 bucks basically, you know, if, I don't know, that's going out if you, you know, meals or that's buying like new clothes or new shoes. I mean, we're not going, you know, right now I think is a really good time to experiment because, you know, you don't really have any reason to go out and you don't really have any reason to buy anything. Like I, I'm not getting any new clothes or anything like that. Cause I'm not going out. Um, I'm not, you know, drinking as much as I, I, I could. That's why I buy the value packs from Costco. So I could drink at home and save, you know? So with all that money that you're saving right now um, and I know sometimes things, are pretty hard. I'm sure people have like lost jobs, but um, if you're in a position where you have some sort of income um, or have some kind of savings, 
and think you're, you're able to, to work to turn that into more money, definitely do that. I mean, I, I, one of my friends, he just, he started buying a uh, workout equipment, like, uh, like barbells and, and these huge like stands. I mean, those are expensive. Buying. Yeah, I know. Yeah. He, he, he sold, he said, he said in the past month he sold, he's grossed five or $6,000 and he's just been selling them on offer up. He started with one, you know, he, he spent like 500 bucks on one set and then sold it for whatever the markup was. And then from there, it was just a snowball effect. I mean, and, and I'll be honest, he's not the, the, the sharpest crayon in the, in the toolbox, you know, I mean, he, he's, he, you know, he didn't go, he didn't finish university and um, he's kind of, you know, just a, a rowdy one. Right. But I mean, he, he did it and um, he was asking me for some advice, but he's been doing pretty good on on his own, you know? So honestly, anybody can really do it. It's just, it's, it's just as simple as putting the time into it. Uh, I mean, and then using the resources that you have, like, you know, you, whether it's your professors or um, family members, I mean, just everybody yeah. has something to offer. So, I mean, it's, it's not, it's not that hard. It just takes time and energy. I mean, and if you don't have that, sure, it becomes kind of a drag, but um, that's with anything in life. I mean, you know, so. Yeah. I mean, it's really that simple. All right. Thank you very much, Anthony. I really appreciate it. And, uh, well, we'll check back in sometime in October. Yeah, that sounds great. Looking forward to it. Um, and yeah, thanks for chatting, my man. Uh, nice to see you. Yeah. And good seeing you too.